Good morning. Um, Merry Christmas as well. <clears throat> so how are you guys doing? Good. Um, when Before we started singing, we heard, I heard a baby crying, and then I was thinking about um, Christmas, and I think Mike even said this last week, but it made me think of it again. So when I heard a baby crying, you're thinking about everyone observes Christmas as what? Jesus' birthday. This is the day he was born. That's what everyone sees Christmas as. Um, and the reason why I picked this picture is because it's what we all picture when we think of Jesus' birth. I tried to find a picture in VeggieTales to make it even more innocent, but it was really weird because it was a couple of cucumbers and a tomato. <laughs> so it didn't, it didn't work out the way I wanted it to. But this picture allows us to see what Jesus' birth may have looked like. This picture is what we all celebrate Christmas for. Or that's what some people say. We get this vision of Jesus' birth. He's in a manger. He's in a barn. And Mary just looks so beautiful. And Mary kind of, uh, Mary is just glowing. And Jesus is this little baby. And then we get another vision of Joseph. And he's this shepherd man. He's, sometimes he's got a cane. Or sometimes he looks like this. And he's got the perfect beard line up. And he's just looking really, really happy as well. We have these perfect visions of this perfect birth, which is okay. That's what we're supposed to be having. I love December because Christmas is in December. December, last year for me, I didn't necessarily like because I had some weird ideas and convictions. But this year, December, I like a lot because... People generally in December are usually happy because usually they like to see their family. Their family's coming into town. And then people like December because Christmas. People like December because usually someone's going on a vacation or someone's coming to you. People like December because we all get really good food. But mostly people like December because this is when we get to see our family and friends. This is when everyone's really happy. This is when everyone's really joyful. So I would say December is definitely affected by December 25th. Christmas affects the whole month of December. Even to the point to where, for instance, I waited till yesterday to get presents, and everyone's still thinking about it. I was thinking about it, but I didn't even get out until yesterday. So that's where my planning was. But December's a great month. December takes us from all year we take communion every Sunday thinking about Jesus' birth, thinking about His death, thinking about His burial, and then we have a day focused. December, and then we have April for Easter. The two days that we're all really focused, and that's okay. Last week, Mike's sermon was really well because he said that these religious holidays that man created help us to do what? Help us to focus on Jesus. But now that I'm deeper in my faith and now that I read Scripture a lot, Christmas means something a whole lot more to me. Isaiah 53 is where we're going to be at. And we're going to hop around, so if you guys would like to get a, a Bible out. Isaiah 53 is, Isaiah is a prophet. And he's receiving these visions from God and he's giving us a prophecy here. This is what Christmas is all about. Isaiah 53, 3 says, He is despised and rejected by man, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we not, did not esteem him. So we go from this vision of we see this perfect baby being brought into the world. There's a star in the sky. You have wise men coming. You have Mary, who was a virgin that gave birth to a child. But this child was born for the fulfillment of these prophecies. The fulfillment of he was despised and rejected by us. Verse 5 says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. He was wounded for our transgression. This image that we have of Christmas, is, it's beautiful. I'm not, I'm not saying it's a bad image. But I think sometimes we get stuck on Jesus in the manger 
as a baby, and that baby was brought into this world for this purpose. Jesus was brought into this world for the purpose of taking on our transgressions. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon Him. For our peace, not His. That innocent baby that we see in these drawings of Christmas is why we come here today. Because He was brought here to be that perfect sacrifice. Verse 7 says, He was oppressed and He was afflicted, yet He opened not His mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so He opened not His mouth. Isaiah is giving us this picture, and the reason why we kind of skipped over a few verses is because we can honestly sit in this chapter all afternoon and talk about the vision of Jesus' crucifixion, because that's what he's talking about. He's talking about the great pain that Jesus is going to go through. The child that we saw in this last picture here, this baby right here, was brought into the world to take on our transgressions. This picture of this child. Christmas means a whole lot more when we think about the innocence of that child, the innocence of Jesus taking on our afflictions on that cross, taking upon our transgressions on that cross, not His. He was perfect. We're going to go to John chapter 6, verse 38. His purpose was to do the will of His Father. What this verse says is, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of Him who sent me. Jesus was born to fulfill His Father's will. That innocent baby in the manger that we see on a lot of pictures this month was brought to fulfill His Father's will. He was brought forth to fulfill the prophecies that Isaiah Jeremiah, all these men prophesied about. He came to fulfill everything they spoke of for hundreds of years. The innocence of that child is going to bear our sins. Christmas means a whole lot more now. Because I don't have kids. But what if someone celebrated a day like Christmas because your child was old and took on everyone's transgressions and they only think of them on Easter and Christmas for the most part. Those are the two days that Christians, people that aren't Christians, whoever, those are the two days that we all really focus on Jesus, Easter and Christmas. But how can we don't focus on them on every other Sunday, every other Wednesday, every day of our lives? How can we just can't do that? I didn't really want to, um, I wasn't sure where I was going to go, but John 18 is one of my favorite passages. It's kind of a lengthy passage, it's not on the slide, but I'm actually going to read it. The reason why I like John 18, 38, um, and we're going to go in a little bit into chapter 19, is because it gives the perfect illustration, because it's found in scripture, of Jesus' crucifixion, of his crucifixion on that cross. Verse 38 says, Pilate said to him, what is the truth? And when he said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in him. Verse 38, Pilate is saying, I find no fault. A man of the world is saying, I find no fault in this man that you want to crucify. This baby we saw in this last picture was brought before the Roman Empire by his own people to be crucified for whose transgressions? Our transgressions. The world even recognized there was no fault in him. Verse 39 says, but you have a custom that I should release someone to you at the Passover. Do you therefore want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Then they all cried again, saying, not this man, but Barbas. Barbaeus was a robber. Verse 19 says, so then Pilate, verse, chapter 19, verse 1 says, so then Pilate took Jesus and scorched him. And the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe. And they said, hail, king of the Jews. And they struck, him on, uh, they struck him with their hands. Pilate then went out again and said to them, Behold, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no fault in him. So they scourge him and they humiliate him. They put a purple robe on him because that's a color of royalty. 
after they put a crown of thorns on his head. This same baby that we saw a picture of is going through this same account that we're reading of. Verse 5 says, Then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said to them, Behold the man. Therefore, when the chief priests and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, You take him and crucify him, for I find no fault. Then the Jews answered him, saying, We have a law, and according to our law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. They're saying, Crucify him, crucify him. This same innocent baby we saw a picture of. And then after they say, crucify him, Pilate says, you do it yourself because I find no fault. And then the Jews dare to say, he made himself to be a, a man of God, to be a child of God. So that is our law we're crucifying him by. This same picture of the same baby. It's kind of odd when I actually thought about it because for some reason in my mind, I had almost like a roadblock. I always kind of differentiated the child of Jesus and the crucified Jesus, when he's still the same man. That perfect baby that we come together in December about is that perfect man who died on the cross for our sins. Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 through 14 is one of my favorite verses when it comes to talking about Jesus, that perfect baby that was brought here. Verse 13 says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us in the kingdom of the Son of and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. That child was born in this world to deliver us from the powers of darkness of this world and lives. Christmas, man. I love Christmas. Santa was good to me this year. But during Christmas, I try not to forget that that same child was brought into this world to deliver me from the powers of darkness. And he came here to deliver all of us from the powers of darkness. That innocent child was brought here to do that. Am I saying don't be cheerful for Christmas? No, I'm saying be cheerful. Be very cheerful because that child... Jesus, whom we celebrate Christmas about, delivered us from all of this. He was the fulfillment of prophecies, taking on our iniquities so we can have the forgiveness of sins, redemption through his blood. His birth is very important. The life he lived is very important. And his death at the end solidifies this importance. His resurrection proves that he is the Son of God. When I think of Christmas, I'm going to paint the picture one more time, but when I think of Christmas, I think my mom used to put like um, like little like glass. You ever seen those glass houses that they put like on fake snow and they're like always on the chimney or in the most random spot in the house? It's like a little village. I always think of Christmas like that. I remember when I was a kid, uh, my favorite thing about Christmas was is we always stayed up till midnight, and we would go to Yuma. And my mom's and my dad's families both lived there. So I knew that I'd be able to stay up all night, and I'd be able to see all of my cousins. So I knew that in the middle of the day, we'd go to my dad's mom's house. We would be with her till about 11 or 12, and we'd open presents. Then we'd go to my mom's mom's house, and we'd go there and open Christmas presents. And then on top of that, my cousins had cousins behind my grandma's house. So sometimes we'd walk around and go open presents with them, and I'm not even part of their family. That's what I think of when I think about Christmas. And that's okay. Because like Mike said last week, it points us all to Jesus. It trains our minds to understand about giving. It trains our minds to understand that Jesus was born as a child on this world. But now I remember when I was a kid, that was all training to bring me to the point to where I am now, where Christmas has a whole new meaning. My question is, is, do we think of Jesus because it's Christmas? Or do we think of Jesus because of sacrifice? The sacrifice that that baby made, the sacrifice that we see and hear about, 
is the reason for the season. I was thinking about, why do I really celebrate Christmas? And it is because Jesus came down, right? It's a good time to be with our family. But the reason for the season is his life. His birth, like we say, his life, his death, and his resurrection. That's all the reason for the season. Let's not get tunnel vision and get just stuck on his birth. That's important, yes. But let's not just get stuck on the child. Let's get stuck on his whole life he lived. That's what's important. That's the gospel. Without the death of that child in the manger, his birth would mean nothing. If Jesus was born, like most all babies are born innocent. They're all beautiful. But if Jesus was born and he did not die and was not resurrected, would he just be another child? Yes. But he was definitely born, he lived, he died, and was resurrected. So he is the Son of God. Christmas is such the perfect story of the perfect Savior. He was born from a virgin, which is a miracle already, before he even came. And then he lived, performed miracles. He died for our transgressions, and he was risen again. I don't know a person that has literally risen from the dead. I know people that might have been brought back to life by a defibrillator, I think they're called. But I've never known anyone that's been dead for a whole day and been resurrected the next day. I don't know anyone that's like that. Jesus is the perfect example of a perfect sacrifice. When we celebrate Christmas, like last night we opened up all our presents, and man, that was the best feeling in the world, feeling all that love, because it's Christmas. And right now, most of us are happy. We're, we're really joyful to be around each other. We're real happy to be with each other. But let's not just do it because it's Christmas. How come we don't have the same mindset every single day? Christmas is the greatest, one of the greatest holidays for me, because that's the time when most people don't argue. That's the time when most of us come together. So I would like to challenge you guys in saying, why don't we pretend to start with baby steps? Let's pretend that every Sunday is Christmas. Let's continue to go forward, remembering that child that was brought into this world that was the perfect sacrifice. I really enjoyed Mike's sermon, and that's what made me think about this last week. I really enjoyed it because... Everything Mike was saying was so true. Christmas is to train us to point us to Jesus. Everything he was saying was so true. And I love that sermon. So when we're being pointed to Jesus in the season of Christmas, since we know who he is, let's remember the rest of his life, not just the beginning, because it's all important. When we say Merry Christmas, it means a lot more when you actually know what that child's done. When I go to the store and I say Merry Christmas to someone, what does that really mean? Because the beginning of Christmas is Christ, correct? So what does it really mean when you're saying Merry Christmas? Right now is a season of giving. Right now is a season of joy. Right now is a season of happiness. Right now is a season of family. Right now is a season of friends. We can go on for days about what season it is because everyone has a little different, little different take on what Christmas may be. But let's take this same spirit of the season and apply it to every day of our lives. I was challenged by when Mike asked me to preach and then I was thinking about what I'm going to talk about. I was thinking we can go into Luke and talk about his birth. We can go into Matthew do the same thing. But then I was thinking, man, am I only focused on his birth on Christmas, or should I be focused on everything else as well? Let's try to focus on everything else. When we're with our family this afternoon or with your friends this afternoon, when you're together and you're, you're eating and you're relaxing and you're enjoying each other's company, remember that Jesus brought you together because that's what Christmas is about. And then don't just remember the child, the baby that brought us together in his birth. Remember his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, and his life that continues to flow through us today. That's what's important about today. 
if you want, when you go home, if you have time, I would encourage you to read John 18 and 19 and learn about his crucifixion. I would even encourage you to read the whole chapter of Isaiah 53. I would even encourage you to read Colossians. I would encourage you to read the whole Bible today, but you can't. But if you can, remember the sacrifice that Jesus, that same child that we celebrate today, made as a man and as a perfect Savior for us. It's important. It's important that we don't forget. And it's important that we always, always practice to be like this every day. One thing that Mike, I think, has taught me, and I think he's taught all of us, is, um, is every day you're worshiping God. Every day your life is a worship to God. Every day your life is almost, a, it, not almost, it is a sacrifice unto God. Every moment of your day, you shouldn't be not thinking about him. So if we're honestly thinking about him all the time, every day should be Christmas to us. Every day should be Easter to us. Every day should be something special to us. But it's really hard because we're people. So, since it's a little hard to do that, let's try to practice it. And today, when we're honestly more inclined to think about him, let's try to do it a little more today as well. When we're getting frustrated with each other because our brothers won't give us a second plate, let's remember that we're here because Jesus came down. I want to close out with this. The reason why the sermon was titled The Start of the Beginning, that's almost kind of weird. It's like, how can you start with the beginning? It's kind of the same exact word. But the reason why it's the start of the beginning is because Jesus' birth was the start of the beginning of our salvation. His birth, Jesus being brought into that, into this world, was the start of the end of the law in the beginning of our salvation through Him. That same child we celebrate was the start of our salvation. He was the start of the fulfillment of prophecy. And now, we have all been delivered from darkness. And now we are all here today, worshiping and celebrating with each other, having fun. We're all going to go in different ways and eat and be happy. But let's really, really try to live this out every single day. Because I don't think any of us can afford to give each other gifts every single day. But what gift can I give my roommates? I can give them the gift of peace. I can give them the, peace, the gift of happiness. I can give them the gift of joy. I can give them the gift of love. I can give my mom the gift of time and actually call her more. We can't always give physical things, but we can definitely give spiritual things. I can give more time to people just like I do on Christmas every single day. I can eat with my roommates every single day like we do Christmas Eve and Christmas morning. I can sit and watch TV with my family or my roommates or my friends just like I do on Christmas Eve every single day. If we know what Christmas is about, let's apply it every single day. Let's be happy that he was born. And since we really have that joy, since we really have that hope, let's live it out. Let's live it out. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to pray out. But remember, Jesus' birth was the start of the beginning to our salvation. Jesus' birth was the start of of the end of the law for us so that we live under grace. Um, we're going to pray, and then um, I think Skyler's going to lead a song. Let us together pray. Our Father in heaven, we'd like to come to you in, in prayer, thanking you for allowing your son to come down and be born and to live a life perfect and blameless, to be a perfect sacrifice for us. I pray that throughout the rest of our day, that we continue to focus on you, Father, even more so today because the whole world is focusing on you right now, God, and your Son. I pray that the rest of our, our week, at least, Father, we can just try to reflect every single day like it's Christmas. I pray that the rest of our week we just try, try to give more of ourselves to people. 
I pray that our day will be eventful. I pray that our day will be full of happiness. I pray that the people who couldn't make it here today because they're with their families, I pray they really enjoy it, Father, and I pray that they all come closer together as a family and they just learn to appreciate each other's time. And in Jesus Christ's name I pray this prayer. Amen.